Welcome back to Thinking About the Thinking Brain. Today, we'll take a look at Lesson 2. Here is a drawing of the human brain. Notice that there is a left side and a right side. And notice all of the folds that we mentioned in our first lesson that serve to increase surface area. Now, let's drill down deeper and take a peek inside your brain. The brain, when you look down inside, is actually a dense network of neurons or brain cells that are all connected. Did you hear me say that scientific name for the brain cell? Who heard me and knows the term for a brain cell? Neurons. There are about 85 billion brain cells, or neurons, in the average human brain. Who can go to the board and write the number 85 billion? Eight five comma zero 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 comma zero 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 comma zero zero zero. That's correct. Nine zeros. That makes for a very large number. Now let's go even further into the brain to look at just one brain cell or neuron. This is a diagram of one brain cell called a neuron with its parts labeled. There are several important parts. First, the cell body or soma is in the upper left. That's the center of the cell that houses the genetic material. The cell receives messages through the dendrites, the tentacle-like structures that reach out to receive chemical signals from other brain cells. Just like you send a signal of readiness when you reach out your hands to someone else to receive a tossed ball, the brain cells have their arms reaching out to receive the chemical signals. The dendrites change chemical signals to electrical ones to send information to the cell body or soma, which then puts out its own signal along its long cable called the axon. The axon carries the electrical message from the soma out to its axon transmitters or axon terminals, located at the end of the axon in the space between the neurons. Now we're going to watch a video about how thinking takes place. You should recognize most of the brain terminology used in this video and hopefully are beginning to better understand how your brain thinks. This is a brain. Estimates vary, but right now the best guess seems to be that our brains contain around 85 billion neurons. The neuron is a nerve cell, and it's the primary functional unit of the nervous system. This is a generic image of a neuron. Neurons actually come in all shapes and sizes, but this is the prototypical version of a neuron that you'll often see in a textbook. The structures extending from the left side of the neuron that look a little bit like tree branches are called dendrites. Dendrites are the area where neurons receive most of their information. There are receptors on dendrites that are designed to pick up signals from other neurons that come in the form of chemicals called neurotransmitters. Those signals picked up by dendrites cause electrical changes in a neuron that are interpreted in an area called the soma, or the cell body. The soma contains the nucleus, which contains the DNA, or genetic material of the cell. The soma takes all the information from the dendrites and puts it together in an area called the axon hillock. If the signal coming from the dendrites is strong enough, then a signal is sent to the next part of the neuron, which is called the axon. At this point, the signal is called an action potential. The action potential travels down the axon, which is covered with myelin, an insulatory material that helps to prevent the signal from degrading. The last step for the action potential is the axon terminals, also known as synaptic buttons. When the signal reaches the axon terminals, it can cause the release of neurotransmitter. These purple structures represent the dendrites of another neuron. When a neurotransmitter is released from axon terminals, it interacts with the receptors on the dendrites of the next neuron, and then the process repeats with the next neuron. Now, let's see if you can remember the names of the parts of a brain cell. 
The cell receives messages through these tentacle-like structures that reach out to receive chemical signals from other brain cells. What are they called? That's right, they're called the dendrites. Now, chemical signals are received from other brain cells by these dendrites, which then change the message to an electrical signal that is sent to the center of the cell that houses the genetic material. What is the center of the cell called? That's correct. It's the cell body or the soma. The soma then sends an electrical signal along its cable. What do we call that? That's the axon. The axon sends the electrical signal out to the end of the axon where these structures release a chemical into the space between the cell. What do we call those structures at the end of the axon? Axon transmitters. Now let's take a look at the synapse. The synapse is the connecting space between neurons. It's very small, less than 40 nanometers in width. A human hair is huge by comparison at 75,000 nanometers. That's like comparing one inch to half a football field. This space, or synapse, is where chemical impulse is transmitted from one neuron or brain cell to the next. Now, we're going to watch a video about how this transmission happens between brain cells. Most communication between neurons occurs at a specialized structure called a synapse. A synapse is an area where two neurons come close enough to one another that they are able to pass chemical signals from one cell to another. The neurons are not actually connected, but are separated by a microscopically small space called the synaptic cleft. The cleft is less than 40 nanometers wide. By comparison, a human hair is about 75,000 nanometers wide. The neuron where the signal is initiated is called the presynaptic neuron, while the neuron that receives the signal is called the postsynaptic neuron. In the presynaptic neuron, there are chemical signals called neurotransmitters that are packaged into small sacs called vesicles. Each vesicle can contain thousands of neurotransmitter molecules. When the presynaptic neuron is excited by an electrical signal called an action potential, this causes the vesicles to fuse with the presynaptic membrane and release their contents into the synaptic cleft. Once they are in the synaptic cleft, neurotransmitters interact with receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. They bind to these receptors and can cause an action to occur in the postsynaptic cell as a result. This action may involve increasing the likelihood that the postsynaptic cell will become activated and fire an action potential, the axon transmitter changes the electrical signal to a chemical one that crosses the synaptic space to the dendrites of the next cell. That cell picks up the signal, converts it to an electrical message, which it sends back to its own cell body or soma. When you think thoughts, this process repeats itself over and over electrical to chemical to electrical signals traveling through your brain from one cell to another. Now that you can see how the process works, you may be wondering what this has to do with how the brain learns. As I mentioned earlier, the neurons in your brain are connected in a dense network like a web. And these brain cells communicate with each other by passing signals. Each neuron is connected to anywhere from one to 1,000 other cells. Overall in your brain, there are over a trillion connections. Who can go to the board and write the number 1 trillion right below the 85 billion? That's correct. A one 
with 12 zeros makes for an even larger number than we had before. When you have a thought, it sends a signal from one set of neurons to another. Then your brain turns the signals into thoughts or actions, and this is how your brain thinks. These messages can travel as fast as a thousand feet per second, or 680 miles an hour. That's the speed of a fast jet plane. Now, remember we made a fist? I want you to make a fist. This is about the size of your brain. Your brain is the most complex three pound mass in the known universe. How cool is that? Let's play a ball toss game to show how cells make connections with each other for thinking and learning. I want you to get up and form a circle. Now, someone will start and toss a ball to one person in the group. That person then throws it to another person in the group who is not next to the first person. Continue to pass the ball from one person to another until everyone has had a turn. Make sure you remember the order in which you pass the ball. Raise your hands the moment the ball has passed through everyone. Remember to record your time for the completion of the th first round. Okay, now let's do it again. Throw the ball in the same order to the same person you threw it to last time, but try to get a faster time. Ready? Go! Now I want you to try it a third time. What happened? Each time you practiced using the same pattern, you were probably able to go faster. This is exactly what your brain does to learn. The more you try, practice, and study, the more your brain cells use the cell connections. Thinking speeds up, you learn more, and in the end, you become smarter. Now that you know how your brain learns, you can use your grit to keep trying even when the learning gets difficult. And with a growth mindset, you know that you can learn anything. In our next lesson on thinking about the thinking brain, we'll learn how you can help your brain function better. So until then, go learn something.